So hello and welcome to round five of the 2021 Northern Talent Cup, where we're at the Red Bull Ring in Styria, headed south from Assen to glorious Austria, ready for two more races this weekend. And it's Czech rider Jakub Gurecki who leads the way with a 39 point gap. But as you can see in these highlights from Assen, he didn't have it all his own way there with two third places. But this weekend, we're back on track after the summer break. Can he take the bull by the horns in Austria? We're about to find out in round five. So, servus und herzlich willkommen in der Steiermark, as we uh, just uh, refined earlier from one of our colleagues at KTM. Hello, welcome to Austria, to the fabulous Red Bull Ring. Although, as you can see, a few clouds over here, over here, overhead today, as we head into Northern Talent Cup race one here at round five. I'm Fran Wild, and alongside me is Elliot York, and we're ready to get back in action after a pretty long summer break in good ways and bad, but I think the adrenaline very much ready to return here at the Red Bull Ring. Yeah, absolutely, Fran, I agree. It was a long summer break, much needed for pretty much everyone, I think, but it is very nice to be back. And there is the starting grid for the Northern Talent Cup. First race of two here this weekend at the stunning Red Bull Ring. It really is a magnificent venue in every way. The facilities are awesome. The surrounding hillsides are awesome and the track Everything is awesome is as well. Everything is awesome. It's just awesome. Austria is awesome. The track is awesome. We love it here. And I'm sure most of these guys on the grid do as well. But that is the man who mastered it the best in qualifying yesterday. And it's Jonas Kutzerek who starts from pole position then for race one. Well, in general, this weekend for Northern Talent Cup races. And a little bit of a surprise, maybe. He's not always had the dry weather pace, but great lap from him to take that pole position and a great lap from this man in second as well. Loris Brenneman, the Dutchman, on the front row of the grid. We do have some interesting uh, things to look out for on the grid here in Austria. That front row, and then you'll see in a minute we have a rookie closing it out in the form of Lennox Famara. And then we have the championship leader, Jakub Goretzky, in fourth. And then one of his closest challengers so far is down in seventh place. That's Rossi Moore. And then Lawrence Luciano, the Belgian rider, one of the race winners in Assen he's even further back I think in 12th place so I think it could be quite an interesting race when the lights go out to actually decide the points I think it's going to be definitely uh, an interesting race round Lorenzo Luciano is second in the championship behind Goretzky uh, so he's got a lot of work to do from uh, the fourth row of the grid the back of the fourth row of the grid as well qualifying was incredibly close just a tenth less than a tenth and a half in the top four uh, and then half a second covering the top seven. So I think we're really in for a cracking race. I think we definitely are. And as we said, we'll move on to this man in a second. But uh, Lennox Vermeer, the Swiss rookie who does lock out that front row, really impressive qualifying from him. He's already had a podium, although that was in the wet. And it's great to see that he's taken another step forward and able to take that front row in the dry. So we'll have to see what he can do. He's also come through from the back, I think, once. So really showing his chops as we move through the season. But the points leader Jakub Goretzky in fourth place that's no disaster he has that 39 point advantage like we said and we've only got three rounds to go and uh, this man as well Cass Beekman's good qualifying from him like you said it's so close there at the front he'll be happy to be there I think it's uh, Goretzky's form at times has been such that it's something to really write home about to be in his postcode on the grid when you're maybe not quite used to getting on the podium every week yet in the NTC so great stuff from him and there is the man you were talking about a minute ago Elliot Lawrence Luciano it looks very chill down there doesn't <laughs> I it I was going to say that's about as chilled as I've seen anyone Love it. on the start grid not even on his bike just leaning on it uh, looking at the surrounding grandstands yeah looking very very comfortable so we'll see if that uh, chillness 
Honda, shall we say, uh, prevails in the race. It can't be too chill because, like we say, he's coming from 12th on the grid. So he needs to get a wriggle. Maybe on, that's he? the secret, you know. Well, just yeah. like, well, he's behind me now. Just got to line up and uh, make the best of it. But uh, that man as well, Kevin Farkas, I'm sure he'll be happy with his qualifying. Great job to out-qualify his uh, rookie but uh, quite hyped teammate, Rossi Moore. Farkas in sixth and Moore just behind him in seventh place. Here he is. So uh, he did post on Instagram the other day as the uh, Rossi retirement announcement was made on Thursday of the Valentino variety that that is indeed why he has his name. And uh, so, yeah, nice little post from the Hungarian. He's in seventh place and incredibly close next to him is Romanian Chakabo Hoschuk, who I think will be uh, aiming to get some good points now. He's had some speed. He's also had some inconsistency over his two seasons in the NTC. Um, but he's definitely one of the fastest in the field when everything goes right. So, yeah, not much of a gap to Moore. And Moore is a race winner now twice this season. So that is a very good benchmark, despite the Hungarian being a rookie. And then next, I think we will see the first home hero, I should say. Not the home hero, the first home hero on the grid, which will be Nicholas Kitzbichler, who's on the third row. Yeah, Kitzbichler's scored in every race so far this year. So a nice, solid year so far for this rider here, Nicholas Kitzbichler. He'll be hoping to have a solid home race, as you say, Fran. The, that podium there was a, a great race from the rider in fifth place in the standings uh, that came out last time in the netherlands with a second place so yeah he'll be riding the crest of the wave it was a five weeks ago but no he will have had a great summer knowing that he picked up a podium knowing he can do it uh, and he's come here to his home grand prix and he's performing well again yeah most definitely um he is yeah he's been knocking on the door to it he's made a big step forward this season that we can see and it's great to see that he's got some pace here on home turf as well so there you can see kotzrek venom and fomara goretzky beekman's farkas moore hostruck and kitzbichler we went through all of those in that little to pre pre-race spiel that's your front three rows and then we have the seventh and eighth rows so we've missed out a few guys there but uh, you've got Vincha, Julius Cunnan and Luciano on that fourth row and then Ramersdorfer, Gertlicher and Kuipers on the next before we have Mollick, Suda and Schneider and then the guys you just saw on your screen. We should say as well as we head into the warm-up lap we do have a few uh, extra riders on the grid this weekend we have uh, guys from the Austrian Junior Cup joining us uh, and because of that we actually had uh, qualifying races so we had all of the field head out in qualifying itself and the top 21 automatically got a place on the grid for this race and then we had a qualifying race where the top three uh, earned their chance to line up and uh, so we got a yeah Damien Bussenkort, Corbinian Brandel and Julius Caesar Rurich with the three who moved through there. So a few NTC riders just missing out there uh, and a couple of Austrian Junior Cup guys in pressing to make the first grid. And then after this race, we'll have another qualifying race and the winner of that will join the Race 2 Northern Talent Cup grid tomorrow. So uh, good to see some of the uh, home guys getting out in this event and Kitz Bichler as well we should say he is also an Austrian Junior Cup rider when he's not in the NTC so we'll have to I think we'll have to watch out for him on home turf I would like to say though partly cloudy it's looking a little bit murky out there isn't it it's hard to tell is it from the TV screens when just before the Red Bull Rookies Cup race it really really threatened to rain the clouds were very dark then the sun came out now the sun's not out again um, as we know in Austria uh, the weather can change in an instant. We've already seen it this weekend, haven't we? Uh, especially on Friday for free practice too and the downpours came without it being forecast. Uh, so yeah, hopefully for these riders they get a nice dry race under their belts. It's been a busy weekend for all of them so far. Uh, and yeah, like you say, Fram, I think we're in for a very, very good race. I think we should have for sure. But you can see the cup standings then, like we said, it's a 39-point lead that Jakob Goretzky takes into this event, the junior... Bruno team rider, really impressing this year, he's taken four wins in a row. He's just been the class of the field in most weekends, although at Assen, he's, like I said in the intro, he's not had it all his own way, and at Assen he took th two third places and he really had to battle for those as well. So he is defeatable, because Moore and Luciano were the guys on the top start then, but he is the guy with the best qualifying position, certainly 
for this first weekend in Austria. So I don't know. I don't want to make a prediction, do you? Oh, I was going to ask you if you've got a prediction to make. <laughs> I think it'll be a close race. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Let's go with that. I think it'll be a close race. Uh, I'm going to go for Rossi Moore to pick up another victory. There you go. I'll stick my neck on the line and go Rossi Moore. OK, then. Well, you may have earned some fans or lost some. <laughs> Let's see then. I'm going to go for Kit Bickler then, if we must. Home here, Ray. Good job. <laughs> so let's see then. Soon enough, I'm sure we'll be getting ready to see those lights come on and go out. Yeah, the green flag then waves at the back of the grid. And then the lights will come on for the first time here at the Red Bull Ring. And they go out and we're away for race one. And Kotzerick looks like he got a really good launch there from pole position. Great job from the Czech rider to not really buckle under the pressure there. And he does take the whole shot with Veneman keeping second as well. And I think Fomara has also kept third. So really great starts there from the guys on the front row. Nothing too dramatic early doors. Look like everyone got through there cleanly as well. Good start to this race. But now I'm sure, yet yeah, we're already seeing the attack <laughs> start then. And the pole sitter goes from the whole shot to maybe even fourth coming out of here. Turn three then for the first time and it's uh, not quite chaos, it's quite relatively smooth through there for the riders as they all pile in on lap one. Uh, but yeah, great start from the guys at front and that's the number 59, that's the championship leader, Goretzky, making a great start from the second row. And who's that, the number 27? That's the Venikman, Venikman, if I say that right, sorry. Veneman. 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 <laughs> uh, a lot of... Oh, I just heard a crash in my ears. I think, I don't know if yeah, we did. That. We just heard a little bit of a crash there. We'll have to see then if anyone has gone down. Can't see it in the, anywhere near the front of the field. Maybe it's just random ambient noise then. But uh, it looks like Famara then has taken the lead. The Swiss rookie, really impressive job. Good start from that front row. Goretzky, equally really good start. But now you can see he's back down into fifth already after attacking early for the lead. So I think it's then Famara. Venom ah, there was a crasher. So who is that that's gone down then? Um, it's tough to see there, but all good to see them up and okay. So it's the number 57 of Killian Holzer, our graphics say. So always good to see a rider immediately up and okay after a crash. And at least there is another race to have another go at it tomorrow as well. So here we go then. We're heading round to uh, Slipstream over the start finish line for the first time here at the Red Bull Ring. Famara is going to lead over the line, but Veneman, I think, will be taking that at turn one and maybe even more. Who is going to come out on the shuffle? this time around it's Kotzerek then the pole sitter back into the race lead already and a few over in the green there yeah we've got to watch out for that we saw just as uh, we finished the Red Bull Moto MotoGP race cut race there was a lot of riders going onto the green and some penalties for championship leaders so yeah definitely keep an eye on that we've seen it already uh, on the opening lap and opening sector in the second lap uh, so, yeah, we've got to definitely keep an eye out on that. So that's uh, Ramestorfer. Seems to have had some drama early in this race, but at least able to rejoin at the moment, even if just for the track time. Ah. There we go, then. That's that incident. Two riders down. So that's a shame for them, but at least both up and seemingly OK after that one. Too easily done when there's so many into turn one. Um, but it was otherwise quite drama-free, but that wasn't too drama-free for Lennox Mamara. Very, very wide there from the Swiss rookie, but he gathers it up well and keeps second place. But that's certainly given, is it Farkas now? Yeah, who's come through to lead. Nice little bit of a gap there for him, but I'm sure that will get cut down again by the time we uh, get a little bit of slipstream back again. Yeah, he's got a nice little lead now as Farkas, so if he can get his head down um, and keep the gap to over like half a second he might be able to break the slip stream early doors you which never will be, know. You which never will be know. fantastic for the race leader but it's not quite as simple as that we're on board with the champion leader Goretzky as he gets passed by a couple of riders there down the Swamped. straight yeah really slip was stream swamped. city all the way around this track isn't it and apart from sector three uh, the middle sector where it's a little bit tight and twisty uh, but yeah there's three really long straights uh, to get tucked in behind these riders especially on these northern talent cut machines Slipstream is very very vital yes it is indeed so then the uh, Faster slap then for Farkas over the line there. Good job from the number 28 to keep that race lead and a little bit of a gap behind him. And then Rossi Moore then. 
So he's taken over in second place. So it's a Ferium Next Generation Riders Team 1-2. Oh yeah, I got it all out in one go. <laughs> one take, one take wonder. But that's a great job from the Hungarian because he was outside the top 10 not that long ago. So that slipstream really is having an effect on this race already. And he's then up in the really big points positions. Famara keeping his powder more or less dry there, although he loses out on third place. Kotzerek still very much in the mix. You can see the number six, the white bike of uh, Hostruck as well. He's got his speed again this weekend. But Goretzky at the moment, after that great start, just a little bit back in that battle with, I think it's Kas Beekmans who's just alongside him at the moment. I'm sure he'll want to move a little bit further forward from there. Yeah, this is a really important race as well for uh, the championship standings. I say that because Rossi Moore is in third place as we get a replay. Not sure what of. There's Rossi Moore going up the inside, sitting up one of his competitors there. That's harsh but fair it's turn three so things can get really really tight into that right hander we're going on board now that's the number 18 Ooh, of Koitus who's got a shot wide brutality <laughs> there but uh, I'm sure Valentino Rossi would give that a thumb up maybe not sure about the Casey Stoner vote but uh, <laughs> at least it was cleanish and uh, no harm done so yeah more then is uh, really making some hay in this race now up into second place you can see he seems to be just cutting down that gap to his teammate in the lead and like you said it is a vital race in the standings because with 39 points in his pocket Goretzky is slowly starting to really make it difficult for the likes of Moore who's currently third and Luciano in second to cut that down. Unsurprisingly then, fastest lap of the race for Rossi Moore. Thought he was going to go at the inside at turn one, but he thinks a little bit better of it. Maybe because it's his can, teammate. <laughs> true, but we can guarantee, well, I can't guarantee, but I've got a sneaky feeling. Oh, he's not got the best of runs out of turn one there. We'll flick left through the turn two king. It's not really a turn, as you can quite see, uh, but we class it as a turn. Some great online debate regarding that <laughs> from different motorsport communities. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he's very close then to Oh, that's oh, contact. that was some contact. Oh, that was a bit of a uh, shuffle there, wasn't it? I think it was Loris Veneman just uh, getting in a little bit hot. And then, uh, yeah, no harm done, though. He's top in the back of his uh, seat unit as well to say, follow me. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure the likes of Luchan and Hostruck will not obey that rule. But you can see there, though, the number 81 of Luciano. We've not mentioned him so much so far, but he has made a pretty solid start to this race from 12th on the grid, and he is just ahead of his key rival, Jakub Goretzky. So that's a good job to at least stay in the same postcode as the Czech rider, and then you can see he does uh, lose out on that battle. Maybe he's hanging it in there, isn't he, the number 81? <laughs> but yeah, it's good that he is around Goretzky at least at this stage in the race if he is to really keep his hopes of the Northern Talent Cup alive. Yeah, there you can see then live cup standings as things stand. Goretzky will increase his championship lead by one point over Luciano, but Rossi Moore will close the gap. Rossi Moore is currently in second place, hunting race leader Farkas. It's amazing, Fran. We always see in the lower classes, don't we? Uh, riders tapping the back of their bikes to say, follow me. I've never seen anyone never... obey. I've never seen anyone <laughs> no, obey. Not at all. I think the only time I've ever seen anyone kind of manage that was Pedro Acosta's win from pit lane in Doha. Yeah. But even then, he didn't really tap his seat. He just decided at some point he was going to have to do it himself. Uh, and I say that, and Rossi Moore has decided that he's going to have to do it and has taken his teammate then. And the Hungarian leads the race, although it is for Mara that you can see on your screen with oh. the best race lap. And you can see Vic as well that gap has come down a little bit and it looks like Farkas has responded as well so uh, that's not going to help their cause if those two guys want to escape Ooh, Ooh, great move. nice and uh, nice and aggressive but clean between the teammates there then <laughs> so uh, Rossi Moore back in the race lead will it last very long we'll oh. have to see he is dead set on taking this isn't he I'm sure very aware of the value of the points that would come from that win yeah, big time. The number 92, Rossi Moore, know exactly what the championship standings are and what he needs to do. Basically, what he needs to do is win the race. That's all, yeah. that's all anyone Just can do. Just win it, and then whatever happens behind him, he knows he did his exactly. absolute maximum because he is 72, is it? Yes, yeah, 72 points off the top at the moment and uh, there was so much hype around him he was so quick in testing and he had a really good first qualifying in Le Mans as well took pole position and then those damp conditions just tripped him up a little bit but since I mean for a rookie it's been a very very impressive season but I'm sure he'll be keen to make up that lost ground from a little bit of inconsistency earlier in the year uh, good job so far though with that race lead and he has held on to it and Famara has taken Farkas as well although 
Yeah, he won't want that, will he? The Hungarian <laughs> Famara also strikes for the lead. And then I think the number 28 just looking for a way through there, but can't quite make it stick. Not uh, not quite going the full Marquez Dovi just <laughs> yet, but it got pretty close there. Let's see then how this shuffles as we head over the start finish line and into turn one once again with that slipstream. It might be more, I think it is, yep. So he's managed to strike back number 92, back in the lead. And nice and clean as well. There's not too many of that front group heading over the green. Now we've settled into this race. Although Kaz Beekman seems to have had an interesting uh, trip there through the uh, long lap. Yeah, we didn't, there's nothing on our time screen to suggest that. I think he's had to bail out he had then, a long, yeah. yeah. He must have had to bail out somewhere as we're going to turn three. It's Rossi Moore leading the way. Two wins in the last three for Rossi Moore, but the title leader Goretzky is making moves at the fastest lap of the race on the last lap. He can see Rossi Moore, one of his challengers, uh, out in front, and he's making moves. He's up into third place. Will he make another move into turn four? He's on the outside, so I don't think he will. Rossi Moore retakes the lead then. Yeah, that was nicely done there. You can see Famara just able to get ahead, but not quite in the braking zone. Uh, enough from the Swiss rookie to keep that position. So good stuff from Rossi Moore. I wonder if it'll uh, change the race at all if he does realise that it is Goretzky right next to him. Looking a little bit keen to try going round the outside, which is a bit of a uh, drama. So that's Damien Bussenkel then, who has crashed out. Obviously up and OK, rejoining the race as well. He is the rider who actually won the first qualifying race. So it, he did make the grid, but that's bad luck then for the Dutch rider. Just a low drama, low side. But I'm sure a bit of frustration for him and he'll want to uh, go again tomorrow and do a little bit better, aim for some points. Yeah, absolutely. Good Let's seas see. up and OK. It is definitely OK. So there's not been too much drama at the front in that uh, short replay time. I think we've still got Fumara in the lead, Moore and Goretzky then. These three at the moment making the most moves. Veneman, though, still very much with the guys that he qualified with near the front of the grid. Great job from the Dutchman. Now you can see Farkas is the guy who's lost out a little bit over the last couple of laps. The number 28 there, the red and white bike. Not quite the same livery as his teammate. And a bit of a wobble there for him as well. Yeah, so nine laps to go then. We're looking back on board Goretzky to Veneman. And there's the passing Rossi Moore. So this is the slipstream coming into full effect. It's a very long straight, 0.6 kilometres, especially for these Northern Talent Cup machines. And that's about four abreast in two. Wow, who's Turn that three. off wide as well? Didn't is quite that, see who that was. Was it Luciano? It looked like it was a black bike. I'm not sure. It may have been Luciano. It's hard to tell from the onboard, but they're <laughs> heading off at an almost right angle. We've also got a tweet from a Dutchman regarding the uh, pronunciation of Veneman, which is Veneman. I know it should be Veneman. We did ask at the start of the season, but it's hard to not sound like a caricature. Uh, want to make sure the affection for the name comes through rather than sound like we're trying to go too far with it. But uh, yeah, regardless, doing a great job there at the number 27. And uh, yeah, so Farkas moves through back into the lead. Great race for the Ferry and Next Generation Riders team at the moment. And again, he's managed to get that gap. Yeah, I was going to say, he's got a nice little gap uh, in hand once more. Uh, and once more, it's Rossi Moore who's chasing him down. Hey. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Uh, yeah, the number 92, Rossi Moore, he's still got Goretzky behind him. That's all he really needs to do. It's a massive gap, so really, he's got in to general terms, away, he's, got, he? he's not got much to lose. He's got to sure. go with the, the top rack, Wes yeah. school of thought, which, uh, no spoilers, yeah, no spoilers uh, can there. go pretty well. Um, so, yeah, great, uh, great race from these guys so far, though, especially the likes of Farkas and Veneman, like we said, and um, they've not really been running quite this far at the front so far in the drive. But wow, what a late move that was. Late decision from Jacobo Hostruck there, the Romanian, to take the race lead. He has Ooh, been, oh, and then there. right on the edge of the track there. But uh, great move from the, the white bike with the number six on the front of it. Like I said, he's so fast. He's been one of the fastest guys in the cup since the cup began, but just has a few problems every now and then, just not quite consistent, but that was a stunner of a move and he's still uh, getting plenty feisty in there isn't he about six abreast going into there Fran that was magnificent viewing thankfully they all stayed uh, up in one piece and once more Firecast has got a little bit of a gap they closed it down within pretty much a sector last time around so it looks like he hasn't quite got the pace to bridge a gap and then uh, extend his lead further uh, because he's got well I'm not sure how many riders there are. There's there's quite a few chasing him down, and they're all battling away. Uh, but yeah, the slipstream really does come into effect, as we've mentioned. <laughs> and again, it's Rossi Moore in second place. So Rossi Moore's doing really well to try and fend off all these riders who are trying to get ahead of him. 
Uh, and Rossi Moore's looking really strong here, already closing down Farkas. Yeah, he is indeed. So the two Hungarians, really great job from them. And you can see that gap was 0.554, but I think it's already come down since that graphic was written. Such is the speed of the NTC and how quickly often these cups can change. But uh, Famara still there, doing a great job, is the Swiss rookie. Hostruck still there. And now it's Goretzky who's just lost a little bit of ground there. And Luciano has lost some of that ground that he made up earlier in the race. Not sure still if it was him that ran on. It may have been. But these guys are all so close in this group. It's a bit of a bigger group than we're used to seeing at the front fighting for the podium in NTC races. Doubtless because of the slipstream and the nature of the Red Bull ring and we have a new race leader once again I believe yep the number 92 then attacks his teammate again but Farkas again will not let him have it <laughs> no prisoners there then from the two teammates Rossi Moore shoving it up the inside at turn one and the number 28 Farkas says no you don't uh, my friend straight back through and now we go into turn three once again what's going to happen here the number 48 of Famara looks Ooh, up the inside it's going to run a little just, bit wide <laughs> <laughs> just uh, hold your breath a little bit there but, yeah. Uh, yeah the Swiss rookie did a great job here like I said, he had that podium in the wet and he's been there, but this is a really great performance from him. I'm sure it'll be a confidence booster as well as hopefully a good chunk of points for him at the end of this race. But yeah, Farkas, though, he seems just able to get away. Oh, there, that there. Into yeah, turn four. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's going to dent that gap somewhat, although he does retain the lead. But yeah, he does seem to be able to, that aside, stay out of trouble a little bit. He's not really been in those big drama moments. Couple of attacks from his teammate, like we've seen, but is able to pick his way through pretty cleanly. And then uh, again, just put the hammer down a little bit as they shuffle behind him. But uh, yeah, as you were then again, Farkas leading more, leading Famara, but it's still been a very exciting race so far, even though we've said that phrase quite a few times. <laughs> Well, we've said it a few times, but it's absolutely true. It's been thrilling so far, and it's only going to get more thrilling as the laps tick down. We've just got un uh, just over six laps to go, sorry. We're going to cross the line with six laps to go as they round at the final corner. Farkas still leading from Rossi Moore. The two have been at lockerheads at the front for the, pretty much the entirety of the race. But I think Famara is going to have something to say. The number 48 falls out the slipstream. He's up the inside. He's got the favoured line going up the inside. But I don't think he's quite close enough to take the lead. But he is going to take uh, second place off Rossi Moore. Yeah, he is indeed. So good stuff from the number 48. Ooh, bit of a bit of a bubble there for the number 92. And Vernerman still very much in there. We'll go a bit more Dutch with it. Vernerman still very much in there at this stage of the race. So great job from him. Like we said, good qualifying and still in contention for a podium here. But we should tell the viewers as well with that turn one, it is so much steeper than you'd think. And that was a... <laughs> Quite a late decision there, I think, from Rossi Moore. Almost contact, maybe even a little bit between him and his teammate Farka. So they do need to be careful because I'm sure, yes, the team will want them both to fight as hard as they can for the win or the podium, but absolutely not end up on the floor. So uh, it's all getting a little oh! big crash then for Jakobo Hoschuk. Oh, that's a shame for the Romanian. Looks OK, I think, but I don't think there'll be much chance of getting back in the race after that one. So another bit of bad luck then for the number six. Not sure who we just hit the back of there. Well, no, maybe he is going to try and rejoin it. So uh, we'll have to see if he is able to, if that bike's OK. And um, you can rejoin, of course, in the Grand Prix paddock. But uh, yeah, good to see he's up and OK at least. But yeah, bit of drama then as it gets closer and closer and they're getting a little bit more desperate in that front group as the laps tick down. Who was it then that he makes contact with? So it's the back of Vinerman, I think, just goes in far too hot. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, you cannot... You cannot fit that many riders around there. This in is that the, this is the of problem. Space. It is always the problem. Uh, so, uh, it's easily done, though, isn't it, Fran? We should say they're getting sucked into a really tight right-hander after a really long straight. It's easily done to just outbreak yourself, and when you're riding in a pack like they are doing, it, it's yeah, it's it's easily done. Uh, so it's just hard luck for uh, the riders if they do crash out. Um, and luckily as well, at least the man who made the mistake is the one who paid with the DNF yeah, and not sure. too much drama for, like I said, I think it was a Vinerman whose rear wheel there got a tag. So uh, good as well, of course, that Hoschuk is up and okay immediately. Oh, oh and tight. there's more there as well. And over the green as well as that Kitz Michler, I think. So they need to be careful. They uh, are not going to uh, get the position they think they have if they end up going over the green on the last lap, certainly. 
But uh, it's all getting a little bit desperate at times then with these guys as the laps tick down. Just need to take a breath and make sure they're thinking through the tactics and not making too many last minute dives, I think. Yeah, four and a half laps to go. It's getting towards crunch time. The riders are, are getting a little bit desperate. They want to try get to the front. They want to try get themselves into a great position uh, to be able to attack and hopefully go for the podium and the win on the last lap. So they're just getting a little bit busy, which is normal in racing. It's going to happen, uh, especially when the riders are all this tight. I'm just looking where Luciano is, Fran. The guy second in the championship is down in 10th currently. He's in this group. So he's there or thereabouts. He's still in with a chance of a podium or a race victory. Who knows what can happen? The number 81 there. Look, at, look out for him on the black bike. Uh, but yeah, second in the championship with Goretzky still in form. So Goretzky still, as things stand, is going to extend his championship lead. Yeah, he is indeed. So uh, obviously Moore is ahead of him, but Moore is not his closest challenger. So uh, that's the way uh, that's the way the maths crumble at the end of this race if Luciano is not able to make up some ground. Although you can see there then he's uh, honed in a little bit. Um, he's not too far off the number 81. Like you said, that black bike, that junior Black Knights team bike has been one of my favourite liveries since the cup began along with Hoss Trucks as well in the Hoss Racing Team. The black and the white, really cool, really swish. Easy to pick out for us as well, which is nice. But uh, here we go then. It's getting feisty once again, but once again, that number 59 has found himself fairly drama-free near the front of the race. And that is how you end up with a 39-point lead. Great job from the Czech rider. Great job from his teammate just ahead of him who started from pole as well. And great job from these two Hungarians who, you guessed it, are one two still with just three and a half to go now really really impressive race from the pair and for Mara there yeah you could see like just thinking there, maybe yeah. not, <laughs> but uh, at least managed to pull up there, thought better of it. But uh, it's a good race from the Swiss rookie still, regardless. And some of these guys with such a big group, they're maybe not going to get anywhere near their best finish on paper, but they'll be whole chunks of time closer to the race win than they ever have been before, which is a really, really impressive step forward for them, regardless if they're not quite fighting for the podium and they can see it so close. It's <laughs> all about progress as well as those wins. But uh, you can see these guys then, just a little bit of a gap behind them once again. But for Mara, definitely making life difficult for Goretzky. I think the uh, number 59 was behind him at this time last lap as well. Oh, no, he's in front of him now. I'm sorry, my eyes deceived me. <laughs> it's a brutal thing about racing in big packs, isn't it? You can be so close to the podium. You can be less than a second from the podium. You can finish, well, you can finish outside the top ten if it's that close. It really is. It's uh, it's brutal uh, in this sport that you can finish so close, and for obviously these young athletes as well. It's gonna, it's all about results. But the main thing for these guys at this early stage of their careers is to learn. And yeah, get, very much. Get, gain experience on these tracks, gain experience riding with uh, very competitive riders around them. Uh, and yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. And unfortunately, sometimes uh, the result doesn't pour, portray that necessarily. Yeah, most definitely. But well, it's a Hungarian 1 2 then still. But as you may have just seen, the best race lap came in from that man, Stepan Suda, in the yellow, where the yellow bike that's not the number 92 of Rossi Moore, that 23 there, nice and easy to spot. So yeah, he's come from 17th on the grid. Just nice under the radar, good solid job moving through. No dramas, obviously, because we've not seen the number 23 really getting into any of these replays of the drama we've seen so <laughs> far. But a great job from him once again to really get up at the sharp end. So uh, could be one to watch come the end as well, because he did get a podium in Assen and has really gained some traction as the season's gone on. I think he had a fifth as well, a podium and a fifth in Assen. So uh, his best results of the year so far, by far. And uh, once again, then, really coming good at the end of the race is Stefan Zuda. Yeah, excellent from the, the number 23, as you say, he found a podium uh, in Aston, so he'd have gone into the summer break high on confidence, his best results of the season, a nice little break, and now he's come back. Didn't have a great qualifying down in 17th, but I was, was going to say he's a those. Sunday rider, but it's not Sunday, it's Saturday. <laughs> um, he's a Saturday rider, uh, and yeah, he's in, in with the chance of the win from 17th on the grid. That's fantastic, uh, fantastic racing from uh, Zuda. It is, definitely. And as you can see there from the graphic, there is a little bit of a breakaway now. These guys got the hammer down. There's more than a second back to the second group, which is headed by Luciano, which is bad news for him, for the Belgian, who's trying to gain those points back, like we said, because both Moore and Goretzky are in the uh, Magnificent Seven who make up the front group now in this race. So let's see what the Belgian can do. All is not lost. We're not on the last lap yet. 
So, uh, yeah, and he's taken three tenths off it there. So great job from him already, the number 81. But uh, these guys then, obviously, a decision was made at some point on that lap. Let's just push. And uh, But the freight train look already so quick. Yeah, Luciano is doing his best to tag on to the back to try and get into the slipstream. This is vital for Luciano, as we've mentioned. It's vital for the cup standings. The number 81, just watch out for him. Goretzky's in fourth, actually title leader. Rossi Moore is third place in the championship, second in the race. He looks like he's going to be challenging Farkas for the race lead if he gets tucked behind. Is he going to make a pass into turn six? No, not quite, but there's only one and a half laps to go, Fran. It's all to play for. It is very much, and Farkas has already shown as well Yes, OK, you may be third in the standings and you've already won a race, but I'm here to win this race as well. So that's uh, definitely, we're not going to see any team orders or dr <laughs> lack of fireworks, coming. I'm sure, between the Hungarians. And look who is coming <laughs> indeed. Great shot there. You can see the number 59 just pulling out, having a look. But uh, yeah, Goretzky then, as we've come to expect from the Czech rider, seems to have played his cards very Ooh. wisely once again. And that's his teammate Kotzerik just heading off onto the green there. It's all getting a little bit spicy now and we're going to head on to the final lap of this first race of round five and it's once again a Hungarian one two but Goretzky is coming. Luciano fastest lap of the race there he is the number 81 he's trying desperately to cling on to the coattails of the lead group but he's not quite close enough is he going to get into the slipstream yes he is so it'll be interesting to see how close he can get to the he back must of have the number nailed 27. Turn one. Absolutely nailed turn one but there's the number 59 Goretzky is he going to get past? Yeah, I thought it was. The TV cameras deceived me. I thought he was going to get past Rossi Moore, but we're going into turn three, fan. We are indeed, and it's still Farkas who leads. Oh, that's late from Rossi Moore, but I think he's going to make it stick. He is somehow then the uh, second Hungarian, now first, manages to find that open door and heads through for the race lead. But oh, I am sure oh. already, yep, Farkas already passed him. Famara as well, pretty light rider, managing to get up there and fighting for this race win once again. And you saw that fastest lap come up as well in the graphics from Luciano. Great job from him. He is definitely in this group now, but uh, Famara a little bit wide there. It's still these three with just that little bit of daylight back to the chasing pack. And it's not Goretzky anymore either. It's Vinerman and then Suda ahead of the Czech rider. So it could be a bit of a swing in the points here. This is going to go down to the last corner. Famara up the inside of Rossi Moore. No, not quite this time around. I say this time around. It's the last lap, so there's no more times around. It's still Farkas into these. We come into the last sector. There's two more corners to go. Not sure who is going to win. It's impossible to call. Number 48, Famara up the inside. Is he going to take Take two in one. I'm not sure. I think he is, Fran. He's gone for it, I think. He might be a little bit wide, is he? And then Rossi Moore's going for the full Jack Miller. What's going to happen here? I think everyone is going to be cleanly through and within track limits. So it's going to go down to the drag to the line. And I think Moore is going to keep it. Yes, I think it is. And it's Famara then in second. But Fark has taken that podium and must be pretty happy with that, the Hungarian. Although he definitely was a rider out there who left so much out on the table. He also would have deserved that win. What what a great final sector as well. Nothing too dramatic, but absolutely fantastic. I was really gritting my teeth there heading into the final yeah. corner. I thought we were about to see some uh, real fireworks, <laughs> but fantastic stuff from all of these guys and Rossi Moore there. Yeah, I think we could all agree with that a little bit. <laughs> pretty crazy end to that but great great race from him and from Famara like we said back on the podium and in the dry Farkas great race Vaneman taking fourth Suda taking fifth from 17th on the grid and Goretzky then not the tactical masterclass today but here we go then here is the replay so I thought we were going to get an Oliveira style here for Farkas, <laughs> but not quite. And they all seem to manage to keep it on the black stuff as well, well away from track limits. Great finish there. And you can see the drag to the line, just uh, Farkas not quite able to make that inside line, pay dividends, but he does nevertheless take that podium. So great race. And it was only 0.013 he missed out on second place by, and the win was decided by 0.031. Yeah, less than a tenth, well, less than half a tenth even covering uh, the podium finishers. Uh, less than a second, well, less than half a second. I've done it again. Less <laughs> than right. half a Can second covering the top seven. <laughs> so it's like we were saying, Fran. Luciano finished less than half a second from the race for it, race win. But he finished seventh just yeah, behind his closest challenger, Goretzky. Crucially, yeah, just behind Goretzky. Then so not the worst day at the office he could have had after a 
more difficult qualifying than we've come to expect from the Belgian um, down in 12th place. So he has gained a fair bit there and Goretzky did lose out a fair bit in the last uh, couple of laps there as well. I thought he was going to do a classic because he's been so tactically good. Uh, maybe, OK, he knows he's not going to be able to quite take the win, but he's played the cards as best possible to get as maximum points as he can. But this time around, not quite everything... Blah, I can't speak <laughs> English. Everything not quite going his way. And it is a sixth place, which I think is his worst result of the year by quite some way. Yeah, he's always been on the podium, the podium yeah, yeah, of course. It's because from last year, because obviously after the COVID-19 pandemic delayed us so much, we had a mad dash for the Northern Talent Cup in the latter <laughs> half of the year. And a few of these guys obviously stood out then as well before this year. They've really started to stand out even more. And uh, Goretzky definitely one of them. But yeah, what a great race. A couple of shout outs as well. Look at the last bit of that top 10. We've got Kernan Bartucha and Kitzbichler, who I obviously got wrong there. That home magic not quite on his side today, but some real standout rides from those guys in eighth and ninth. I wasn't going to mention it, Fran, but I did get Rossi Moore right to win the race. Oh, you did. Um, you absolutely... Uh, but that's all I'll say about it. As they come into Park Fermi, oh, celebrations... Career change required for me. <laughs> I'll head in uh, commentate on golf. A bit slower. <laughs> Maybe next time. Maybe tomorrow. There's another chance for you to get it right. So the great, you see, elation then for uh, Lennox Famara. Really great race from him. Swiss rookie, good stuff. Obviously, great race from everyone in Park Fermi. Everyone in the top group as well. And you can see that gap really, really opened out in the last couple of laps. Uh, Luciano was the man trying to bridge it late on, and he did, like we said, absolutely nailed turn one, did the Belgian, to tag onto the back of those guys in the final lap. But then it's 2.6 seconds off the win for uh, Kernan in eighth place. So a really, really good job from this front group to just put the hammer down when they needed to. I believe that was the race-winning overtake from the number 92. But then he did lose the lead again there. <laughs> and then uh, took it back again. So, yeah, really aggressive race between these two guys on the right of the screen, the number 28, number 92, the Ferrium Next Generation Riders team. And Famara there, just a little bit wide, but yeah. really, really stunning performances from all of those guys. And Suda there on the left, making such progress after a more difficult qualifying. And then that drag to the line. It's really hard to tell the perspective, isn't it? Yeah. Especially between second and third. It's like, mm, just checking the timing <laughs> screen. And also visually, 0.013 seconds, quite hard to judge. Yeah, it's absolutely but nothing, is it? Stunning race from those three. Another photo finish in the NTC, as we've come to expect. Yeah, another fantastic race. We've predicted a fantastic race. We've said the qualifying results were very close. And so it prevailed, Fran. We were absolutely spot on. It was a fantastic race as we look at the final results. Which I don't believe are quite correct. But we'll hopefully get them in a second. Farkas was on the podium. He was on the podium. According to our standings on the final lap, it's definitely Rossi Moore who took that win. Um, Farkas was within half a tenth of it, but in third place with Famara splitting the two Hungarians. Yeah, they're still not right, so, are they? Yeah, still not, not the sure right exactly what's gone on with the results then there, unless it's either our timing screen or the results on the screen. We cannot confirm which it is at the moment, unfortunately. But uh, as soon as we do get an answer, we'll let you know. There you can see then, Dorna CEO Carmelo Espaleta. Some uh, royalty down there to uh, greet the guys after another stunning race. Obviously, a really big part of all the talent promotion programs of Dorna Sports, um, including the Northern Talent Cup. And uh, really pushing to try and create as many opportunities as we can on the road to MotoGP for young boys and girls from all around the world to try and follow their dream of being a motorcycle racer. <laughs> Sounds scripted, but it's not. I just speak like this. Uh, no, genuinely great to see then Mr. Espaleta down there. I'm sure that would be a nervous meeting for a few of these guys at their age coming yeah. <laughs> straight from that race. Now, the road to MotoGP is a fantastic setup. Obviously, like you say, Fran, there's... There's, uh, there's plenty of talent cups available now, the British Talent Cup, the Northern Talent Cup, the European Talent Cup to name uh, three. And it just gives young hopefuls looking up to the MotoGP riders 
uh, of today and tomorrow, a pathway to success, basically. Pathway to success, that's lovely. Is that stolen from uh, uh, <laughs> something else? I just is that made a it up, secret right? tagline? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, it is very much, yes, like you say, pathway to success, the road to MetaGP. Um, and the newest part of that, of course, I'm going to plug it, the FIM Mini GP World Series um, for riders to start their career on two wheels on smaller bikes and see if they've got the chops to take it to the next level. But here we go then, the podium. So in third place, it's Kevin Farkas after that stunning race, truly well-deserved, aggressive to the best point and getting the job done to at least take a podium. Lennox Fumara, really, really impressive today in the dry. And Rossi Moore then back on the top step once again and getting some points back as well. So I think we'll have the national anthem of Hungary to enjoy once again, won't we, in a minute? So it is Mr. Espeleta then giving the trophies today. So first of all, third place to Kevin Farkas. That is a hard earned trophy there. That is very well deserved. And then second place to Lennox Formara. He's been up there before, but I'm sure this one tastes even sweeter. And finally, the winner's trophy then once again, it's to Rossi Moore. Congratulations to the Hungarian. Another stunner here in Styria. And now I'm sure we'll enjoy his national anthem. So congratulations then to Rossi Moore back on the top step. Really impressive from him. So that's three in the last four races now, isn't it? Really impressive stuff. And making up some real ground in the standings as well as uh, Goretzky, I think, took sixth in the end. So I think we're gonna get some highlights then. The green flag went and the lights went on and off. And then we got underway with Jonas Kutzerek on pole position and taking the whole shot as well ahead of Vinerman and Famara. Losing that a little bit, but not too much. But uh, the Swiss rider would remain in the mix throughout. And then we had a bit of a dramatic crash to start off, but riders are seemingly both okay. That was good stuff. And then slowly but surely, well, a little bit of drama there, but slowly but surely the Hungarians started to make their mark, didn't they? So Damien Busson called sadly crashing out of the race, but Loris Veneman staying up in the mix throughout. But these two guys, the number 28 and the 92, all the attacks that were thrown their way, they managed to stay so consistently in those podium positions. Jacobo Hoschuk, some bad luck for the Romanian once again, really fast, but just, yeah, just a little bit overcooked it there. Sadly, losing the chance at a finish today. I'm sure he'll be back for more tomorrow. And then these three then already here by this stage of the race were really in that mix for the podium and uh, making moves at the front. Some good aggression between the Ferrium Next Generation riders' teammates as well. Nothing uh, too... Uh, I don't know what's the word it was it was nice it was a good battle really great to see and then right down here then Rossi Moore getting the job done on Lennox Pomara the Swiss rider not quite keeping it perfect through that final sector but a stunning photo finish once again for the Northern Talent Cup and once again it was Rossi Moore on the top step congratulations to the Hungarian let's see what he's got tomorrow